Hi, you're listening to the New Space India podcast, a bi-weekly talk show that exclusively brings insights from the Indian space activities ecosystem. I'm your host Narayan, the co-founder of India's first space-focused think tank, Spaceport Sarabhai. Guests on the New Space India podcast help you understand space activities related macro and micro trends within India in all aspects including space history, local industry, space science, technology evolution, law and policy, art and more. The New Space India podcast is supported by Dassault Systems, a global leader in providing businesses and people with collaborative virtual environments to enable sustainable innovations. Dassault Systems Solutions supports startups, small and medium scale enterprises and original equipment manufacturers in developing disruptive solutions for space launchers and satellites. Hi and welcome to yet another episode of the New Space India podcast. I'm very lucky to have uh, Enrico here who is the head of the Australian Space Agency talking to me about all his plans for Australia and for India at the same time. So Enrico, uh, I hope you know India has been treating you well and you can handle spicy food and welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you very much. Love spicy food. The uh, hospitality from our partners in India is being very warm, very welcoming. So, you know, you have a industry background and Australia is very lucky to have a person like you who comes from uh, the industry to lead the space agency and build up the ecosystem there. So, I mean, what do you see the current landscape of Australia as and, you know, what do you intend to achieve uh, in your tenure? Yeah, it's it's a very exciting time to be in space in Australia. Uh, our space agency is only 4 years old, so relatively new compared to to many global industries, but um the formation of the agency in 2018 really catalyzed the nation around the opportunity space has for Australia. We have a rich heritage, you know, we've partnered with NASA and the European Space Agency for, you know, more than half a century now on on deep space uh exploration. Uh, and we've, you know, been a, a long-term user of Earth observation data for our primary industries. What we're seeing now is a real acceleration and diversification of the sector. Uh, we've identified our priority areas. We've developed roadmaps. We're seeing um, investment flow into a whole range of startups uh, and new entities. And so. As I project out, you know, I'm really behind our purpose. How do we build a, a globally respected and, and thriving space sector uh, here in Australia that, um, or, or here in India, we're obviously today, but uh, back in Australia, uh, that really lifts the economy, uh, improves the lives and inspires the lives of all Australians. Right. So, I mean, as you mentioned, Australia has been a very strong downstream economy. And in fact, you know, I have a lot of friends from Australia who are living in Europe and other places who try to do the satellites. And I mean, I guess you yourself are an example of that, uh, you know, moving away and coming back at the same time. So what sort of uh, space capabilities are you trying to achieve? You know, obviously you have a very strong downstream sector, but uh, also across, you know, upstream, midstream, what is it that you are trying to achieve? Yeah, I mean, it goes back to the diversification thing. So fully upstream, we see access to space as a priority area for Australia. So most recently, we had uh, NASA launch a sounding rocket campaign from Equatorial Launch Australia's site uh, in Northern Territory. So obviously, access in space launching from Australia is, is you know, is, is, is the top of the value chain. And the one thing that can open Australian space industry to the full value chain of space activities, we were actually one of the first nations to launch a satellite into space from our own territory. And it's a shame we stopped, you know, imagine if we hadn't stopped, you know, 50, 50 years ago. Uh, but we are now seeing uh, several spaceports being developed around the nation. Uh, the Australian Space Agency, we are the regulator for launch activities in Australia. So how do we do that responsibly and in a safe manner? So from an upstream perspective, um, we will see uh, domestic rocket developers like Black Sky or Gilmore, uh, AT Space, develop and build rockets in Australia. And we anticipate we'll see a large international investment uh, opportunity to bring rockets to, to launch from Australia. So that's sort of upstream. Midstream is where you're starting to see us uh, develop more sophisticated satellites. Um, so, so this year, the Australian government announced what's quite historic in terms of a thinking long term and the magnitude of investment in civil space with the announcement of our National Space Program for Earth Observation. So this program will see Australian design, build, operate its most sophisticated satellites to date. You know, to date, we've had mostly uh, CubeSats, but these will be uh, sophisticated um, Earth observation satellites, um, really aligned with the government's um, uh, priority in climate science, uh, climate change adaptability. 
Right. Fascinating. And uh, I mean, you have an array of things that are planned out. And I think it's a great opportunity for a lot of the Australian entrepreneurs to, you know, to be involved. Uh, but, you know, at the end, um, it all comes down to programs and procurement that you can provide as support to SMEs and both startups. And, you know, there are two different beasts at the end. I mean, one is you can consider a smaller beast, but one is more like a baby that you have to, you know, help and support, right? So uh, this is also one of the challenges that I think India has, where, uh, you know, there are not many support programs not yet fully conceived when it comes to startups and SMEs to help them, you know, either find product market fit or find traction or file pilot programs and so on. But, you know, I see often that you guys have an allocation and then you have some programs rolled out. So what is it, uh, you know, in both procurement as well as uh, processes that you have in place? that supports both, it could be, you know, two people startup, three people startup, university spinoff, or an SME that is trying to then, you know, diversify or scale, or, you know, have something that they can then export out of Australia as well. Yeah, there's, there's quite a, a, long, a long answer. I'll try to keep it yeah. short, uh, but an array of programs uh, that the Australian government has invested in and has invested, invested in going forward. And as a, a relatively new agency and new commercial sector, we can sort of look to what's worked overseas. You know, we've seen in other markets, uh, procurement programs, um, government as an early anchor customer has has done amazing, you know, has, has allowed rapid growth of the sector. So to date, uh, the Australian government has invested in a couple of programs targeted towards SMEs and startup um, organizations. And as a sector, we're really in the startup phase transition into the scale up phase. So I'll just touch on a couple of our legacy programs and then some of our, our newer programs. Uh, so we have the Space Infrastructure Fund. So the Space Infrastructure Fund uh, around Australia has invested in capabilities that uh, a variety of small to medium enterprises can access to develop their businesses, whether it's a emission control center, uh, tracking facilities, uh, data analysis facility, uh, for example, three of the projects we funded in that will really uplift uh, the sector. Uh, we also have um, our Moon to Mars program, and there's various aspects to our Moon to Mars programs. One of those is about supply chains. How do we get these new Australian companies, new technologies into international supply chains? Because as you know, space is an international business. So if Australian entities aren't developing their wares for export, you know, it's going to really be hard to get enough market penetration and, and, and value to those organizations. So through various of our programs, uh, we're investing in supply chains. Um, the other one we're keen to do is, um, as we look to the future, is how do we get space heritage for Australian hardware? And so we've got some programs looking at how um, we can really accelerate our heritage uh, as a nation. So that's another investment area. Then another area to your point about PhDs and research is we have a SmartSat uh, Cooperative Research Centre in, in Australia, and uh, they are funding PhDs, uh, professional, professional chairs in some of Australia's leading uh, universities. And so it is a really multifaceted approach. And then what's newest is what I touched on before is our National Space Program for Earth Observation, which is a major procurement program, right? So now you've got um, something you can signal to the market there's a long-term order book uh, to develop uh, develop the sector. So, so our our um, they're, they're sort of the the monetary programs that are in place. But it's not you know government's role isn't just to fund and, and stimulate the sector. We are the regulator. So having a regulatory framework that's responsible and entrepreneurial that's a really important part of enabling the sector, and we're and we're responsible for that. Creating international partnerships. You know we're we're you know, thrilled to be here uh, at the Bengaluru Space Expo. I'm leading a, a delegation of over 30 Australian professionals, over 20 organisations. And so we have a role under our international pillar to open doors internationally for partnerships. So it's not just about procurement and grants. It's, it's um, you know, re removing the barriers to grow these businesses, providing international um, connections, but also setting the vision and the aspirations under the civil space strategy we're developing technical roadmaps for priority areas. And they set a 10-year vision and aspiration on where a particular priority area will go. Why is that important or, or what's, you know, what's the value of that? If I reflect on our first roadmap, which was communication and associated technologies, naturally for Australia, large continent communications are pretty important. Um, what we found is uh, when we celebrated the uh, one year anniversary of that roadmap, we'd seen well over $100 million invested in the various pathways. And so that's shown to me our roadmaps set a vision, set an aspira aspiration for the nation. And they're a real guide for investors and industry on, on where to place the safe bets, where may government invest, where's the market opportunities heading. 
Right. I mean, fascinating that you have covered almost uh, everything. I mean, I must probably congratulate you because you probably have uh, something, you know, planned for every kind of community and every kind of person. I know now you're here in, in India, and as you said, you're leading a delegation here. That's very interesting. Um, what are you trying to, you know, achieve as topics of cooperation? Because I know that you have a very strong cooperation with ISRO at the government and uh, to government level that is going on. Uh, but then, you know, both on the Australian side and the Indian side, we have very strong new space communities that are growing. Obviously, you know, a large part of your delegation here is all Australian companies at the end that is trying to do business uh, at the end. So, uh, you know, is there any focus areas uh, beyond government that you're looking to achieve in India? Absolutely. There's, I'd say, three main objectives to this delegation um, visit and, and uh, having the agency here. Uh, the first is to really promote Australia's capabilities, our technology, our services. I think Australia's history in space is known. People have seen the dish, understand our role in the Apollo landing. But I think probably internationally we have a better job to demonstrate the diversity of our sector, the niche technologies we may have in robotics and automation that stems from operating mine sites from thousands of kilometres away to expertise we have in space medicine life sciences, which coming into this role as head of the agency, I was, I was delightfully surprised to understand what we've developed from our experience in managing our teams in down in Antarctica and, and remote communities in Australia is directly transferable into space. So we want to tell that story uh, while we're here in India. The second is, is really to demonstrate to India and our, and our great partners in ISRO and InSpace and NISL that we can be a partner of choice. Uh, we're excited to be collaborating with Israel on, on Gaganyan mission. We're both partners in the Quad Space Working Group. Um, and so there's various overlapping Venn diagrams that make um, make sense for us as partners in the Indo-Pacific to, to collaborate on space. And also because as Israel and, and India more broadly in the last few years has focused on commercialization of the sector, that really aligns with the purpose of the Australian Space Agency. So the third objective is how do we facilitate interconnection? How do we bring these entities together? Uh, how do they understand where collaborative opportunities um, can be? Yeah, again, you know, uh, very, very interesting um, at the end. And you know, this is the Space Expo that is happening uh, after the COVID time. And in fact, I think we've missed an edition. And it's uh, after four years, actually, the community in India is meeting through the Space Expo. Um, and obviously, it's been a while and it's fascinating to see all the big delegations coming in, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, sorry, I think we have Australia and then uh, the Netherlands and the UK is also here. Uh, but then, you know, you're here at the expo and, you know, there's a hundred other exhibitors from different countries. So what are you looking to achieve at this expo? Uh, well, I think again, tell tell that story as a, of of our of our capabilities. Uh, give a platform for the twenty plus Australian organisations that have come here to show their wares in artificial intelligence, edge computing on orbit, to uh, new Earth observation sensors, to to launch capabilities. Um, so really showcase uh, them. Uh, really tell that story. I think is is the primary reason for for being at at the expo and, and supporting our terrific partners in in Israel as well. Right. So. Uh, again, you know, from uh, where you stand, the picture is looking very bright and, you know, the future is looking very prominent uh, from a standpoint of capabilities and hopefully, you know, creating a whole new ecosystem that not only caters to the local requirements, but also globally around the world. Uh, but then, you know, at the end, you need obviously cooperation from all uh, kinds of people to be able to achieve a lot of this. Uh, so, from your standpoint as to where you've seen, you've seen what happened in the last five years since the space agency has, has gone through. Uh, where do you see Australia? And if there is any milestones that you have in your mind that you think the country will achieve uh, in the next five years, where do you see everything going in the next five years? Yeah, it's 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 a fascinating time to to be leading the agency and and seeing our sector come together. The next five years are critical. You know, as you said, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of cooperation. We're seeing capital inflow. For the next five years, we have to see scale up of our sector. We need to see these companies um, generate revenues, uh, ac access export markets, and get space heritage. And I think there's there's multiple ways that's going to happen. From a launch perspective, within the next five years, Australia will be a launching nation again. 
uh, I think both domestic rockets and, and internationally developed uh, rockets. And that will make us a hub, I think, in the region um, for, for launch activity, leveraging our geography, our talent base, our trusted alliances. We can protect uh, sensitive uh, technologies. We'll see these first satellites under our National Space Program for Earth Observation um, you know, be launched. Why is that important is historically Australia has been an excellent consumer of earth observation data. You know, we lead the world in our, our capabilities, for example, with Digital Earth Australia at, at Geoscience Australia, analyzing the data for the downstream, as you said before. But um, this, this takes us to being not just a consumer, but a contributor to earth observation data. And that's really important. You know, we've had a bit of a free ride to date, and this means um, we become an indispensable partner to that global earth observation set, which is so critical to um, understanding our planet. Um, the other things you'll see us do is, is develop a rover for the moon. So last uh, September, we announced we'd signed a Space Act agreement with NASA to develop an Australian rover uh, that will go to the moon. It will pick up uh, lunar regolith, take it to a NASA plant to extract oxygen. That's going to allow us to demonstrate to the world the experience we have in remote operations, which stems from our, our resources sector, but also the experience we have robotics uh, and, and, and autonomy. Uh, and, and so I think the next five years are going to be very telling. We'll see our international partnerships strengthen uh, because of those, those programs as well. Right. And um, one of the interesting things that I read uh, some time ago was uh, a very interesting mapping of the Australian space economy. Um, I think some of the institutions that are tracking these in Australia are doing a fascinating uh, job because I've never seen uh, such extensive tracking of capabilities that is being done in other countries, even including the US. And then, you know, that is, I think, leading to a lot of the strategy that you are putting together and so on. And I read, uh, you know, somewhere that uh, you are looking to grow the Australian space sector to something like 12 billion and have about 20,000 jobs or so by the year 2030. It's a very interesting uh, target uh, that you have put to together. I'm sure that your own background in the industry has contributed to a lot of that kind of target setting uh, framework at the end. But then, you know, uh, there needs to be parts of space economy that needs to grow that, uh, you know, to you, for you to achieve that particular target. And obviously the launch sector is very small compared to the rest of the space economy. And, you know, sa building satellites is also smaller when you compare to the application side. Uh, at the end. So how do you foresee achieving this target and where do you see, which parts of the space economy do you see, you know, leading up to this kind of a number? So I think we will see growth across upstream, midstream, downstream in terms of jobs. Jobs. If you look today, we have several CubeSat programs in work. We're about to step into some of our um, organizations that are involved in IoT or um, even aircraft communications start to build constellations. So I wouldn't underestimate the advanced manufacturing um, capability that's going to be established in Australia. And, and through a recent um, government program, uh, there will be actually investments in, in space parks and space manufacturing centers. So I think, I think sort of that uh, design, development, operation of satellites is, is going to be quite significant uh, in the years to come as we'll be launched, as, as we talked about. And launch, um, like you've seen in New Zealand with Rocket Lab, once you have domestic launch, it, it, it opens up a whole supply chain opportunity and it opens up you know, missions you wouldn't have as a nation, interplanetary science mission that can support a great the great planetary science community we have in Australia, uh, for example. You're absolutely right. The downstream applications there is there's still a tremendous amount the world can do with with Earth observation data for primary industries, for productivity. You know, we're just scratching the surface, sort of quantum sensing from space that's going to enhance prospecting for for minerals, uh, for example, and so. I'm very confident in 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 the jobs growth, and we're seeing that there is you know space companies of all sizes in Australia, from startups to the primes, are hiring today. It's a very competitive field, and if anything, that's the inhibitor to growth is is developing the workforce at at the pace we we need to. Um, and so I think um, that's how I'd broadly answer it, Narayan. I think it's across across our priority areas uh, where you'll see us develop those uh, skill sets. But we've got some great companies. You know, one is a Space Machines Company that are part of our delegation here, and they're already working across the India-Australia border with uh, teams in, in both jurisdictions, and they're looking at on-orbit logistics. And so as our new minister, uh, Ed Husick, uh, has been promoting uh, a minister of industry and science is we need to back Australians. We've got some Australians with some great ideas and really have that self-belief. We can mix it with the best in the world. And I think that's going to generate a lot of opportunities. Right. And good luck to you, you know, as you get to the get there. Uh, 
um, maybe one last final question before I uh, leave you. Um, you obviously mentioned about Gaganyan and uh, the ISRO program. I mean, ISRO is the elephant in the room in India, at least. So we cannot really say no to it, any kind of programs that they have, right? So um, what are some initiatives that you foresee that is happening in India at a, uh, that can extend this G2G cooperation? Uh, but also, you know, I guess uh, in terms of other aspects, because today you see India, not just on the human space flight, they started starting to work on, you know, space situational awareness. They're starting to work on many other interesting topics that are out there. So uh, do you see this level of cooperation ex extending? So over the last few weeks, we've had detailed workshops with with ISRO and InSpace and, and other initial and other organizations about where, where are our target priority areas for collaboration. So in Australia, we have our seven priority areas, but out of those, what what are what are sort of ripe uh, for our, for the Australia India relationship? And where we've landed is Earth observation, uh, PNT because of its criticality to so many industries, uh, more so every day. Uh, and then space medicine life sciences, which obviously has a direct tie to um, uh, Gaganyan mission uh, into the future. But sort of intersecting that is is enabling technologies, artificial intelligence, advanced manufacturing in particular. And so it's sort of it's the overlap of those two where you know we'll be encouraging through our program sort of cross cross border collaboration. Uh, as it pertains to Gaganyan, you can imagine Australia is a great place for for tracking and and guidance and, and telemetry, and that's an area we're exploring with Isro. Uh, to support uh, as well right so good luck to to you and uh, you know the rest of your team i hope uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, press announcements and all kinds of things that will happen both for you with isro and uh, for the companies with indian counterparts at the end you know just to leave you with one last uh, thought outside of the space industry i would love to know what are you looking to try or test uh, here in india outside of the space work that you are going to do is it food or is it something else Absolutely, food. I uh, and I had, you know, I, I got uh, introduced to various things at um, breakfast this morning. Is it um, doses? Yeah, yeah, and uh, sambar. Yeah. So I uh, know I'm, I'm very excited to try as much uh, local cuisine as I can uh, while I'm here, and uh, fortunate to be in in Bengaluru, but also uh, visiting uh, um, Hyderabad and um, uh, New Delhi later this week. Right. So I hope we can keep bringing you back to India and, uh, you know, have all of this cooperation. Go ahead. Thank you so much for spending time with me and, uh, you know, allowing me to record you today. Yeah, no, thanks a lot, Narayan. Great questions. Great to meet you and chat. Thank you. Thank you for listening in to this episode of the New Space India podcast. If you enjoyed this conversation, please share this episode with anyone you believe will enjoy listening to it. You'll be able to find the New Space India podcast in any of the podcasting platforms that you may be using including Apple, Google, Spotify, YouTube, and others. Do subscribe to the podcast in case you want to receive new episodes automatically. I'm grateful if you're able to leave a rating for the podcast, which will help others discover it. Thank you for listening in again, and the next episode will be out in the next two weeks as usual.